Hello, all you beautiful people out there. A bit of Righteous Brothers, please. Oh, my love, my darling, I come for your touch. A long, long time. In time. Time and the Brooklyn Cafe is open for business. Live from the Amp Media Studios, Dawn and Freddie S. and their team are ready to serve up a huge portion of fun for lunch with friends and neighbors. So let's break open that lunch pail and unwrap that sandwich you brought and take a front row seat in the Brooklyn Cafe and get ready to enjoy some humor and hot topics. It's time to get a healthy serving of hope and happiness to help your day go by with a smile. Your host, Dawn and Freddie S., are ready to talk about food, health, dating, or just plain dream making. If you have a story to share, movie review, restaurant critique, or just a coincidental thing that happened to you, call in toll-free 888-994-4995, Studio A, right now. Sit back and enjoy your lunch break at the Brooklyn Cafe. Here are your hosts, Dawn and Freddie S. Show back since saying the, the movie Ghost. But he'll tell you it's something else. What's the name of this? By the Righteous Brothers. It's Ghost. It was the Righteous Brothers. I, I, it was made for the movie Ghost, but it was created by the Righteous Brothers. That song amplifies Ghost. With Dudley Moore and what was his face? Wasn't Dudley Moore. What was her name? 
It was Demi Moore. Demi Moore. <laughs> Two different people. Oh, Demi. I said Dudley. I meant yes. Demi. Demi Moore. And what was the name of the good-looking guy that died? Patrick Swayze. And Swayze. Ooh. And they did that whole the scene pottery with scene. the pottery. Yes. <laughs> so you see, everybody remembers Ghost. See, not everybody. I don't. I've never seen Ghost. I know you have. So when I heard the oh. song, I know. You, Can you wait imagine? a minute. No, no. It gets better. So my son was in Tampa, and there was a famous person in where Well, he before was you at. go there, go back to Ghost. It goes back to Ghost, but it goes back to the story. He's never seen Ghost. You got to watch it. Remember how you watched Ice Castles last week? Yeah. You got to watch Ghost. <laughs> oh, Lord, you're going to make me cry. There, it, there is. it is. You don't remember this? How young they are. This was the number one scene wow. ever You're going to make me cry again while watching a movie. <laughs> <laughs> never seen Ghost. So this famous person was at this event by the name of Roger Clemens. Roger Lemons? <laughs> Roger Lemons. <laughs> and then I found out there are producers. They thought that Babe Ruth was a black man. <laughs> Who thought that? Somebody Casey. Else. Somebody. Casey. Don't, don't, don't do a name right. <laughs> I was waiting like, for that on. one. And then Henry Aaron they thought was a candy bar. Hank, I thought it was Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Like O. Henry candy bar? <laughs> they thought it was the O. Henry bar. Hank Aaron. At least G-Man knew who Hank Aaron was. No, he didn't. G-Man did. No, he didn't. He Jalen. He was like, who's that? Was he didn't know either? He didn't know either. Uh, um, so uh, how bruh. old am I? <laughs> how old am I? I mean, they don't see ghosts. He doesn't see... Nobody knows who Roger Clemens is? They don't oh, know Roger Clemens. Roger Lemons? Not Lemons, Clemens. How I, can saw you... him, I saw him pitch in the World Series against the Marlins. Wow. I saw Joe Robbie Stadium, the where Mets. the Marlins beat, us, beat him, too. Wow. I saw him. the Mets and the Yankees in the World Series, which will never happen again. But guy gave me that one because I asked before I died. And he threw at Mike Piazza. And, and the bat broke, and he threw the bat at Mike Piazza. Yeah. I and almost that. started a, a World War III in there. So what do you think, back to when you've got kids and grandchildren, you're going to ask them, do you know? Freddie Santori. And they're going to say, who? The <laughs> Beatles movie is coming back you know, out. When my, when my wife was, in the, was working. She used to work for Sun Sentinel. She was leaving for lunch, and they were, she was talking to one of her co-workers as they were going down in the elevator at the Sun Sentinel. They were talking about the Beatles, and then some one girl was looked who at her and Beatles? said, who are they? You know who the Beatles are? <laughs> there are people, the there, we have crew in here that don't know who the Beatles are. Who doesn't know? Bring them out here right now. True. No, it's nobody that's here. No, you don't know Roger Clemens. Don't that go high and mighty? Well, like, that's, that, that's Roger Clemens. Some people don't watch sports. The Beatles are national icons. Roger Even Clemens people. is a national icon. Do you know who Aaron Rodgers is? Yeah, I do know who Aaron Rodgers is. Why do you know him? I don't know what he does. I just recognize the name. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize the name Aaron Rodgers. Do you know the difference between a baseball and a football? These are football? the future leaders of our country. <laughs> I know. I do know Chipper John Jones. Who do you know? You know Chipper Jones? Yeah. From the, the Braves. Atlanta Braves? Yeah, because... Here's the thing. He's Atlanta Braves. My dad, when I was growing up, <laughs> he, he loved Chipper. Take, he would take me to the Atlanta Braves. He is the number one hated baseball player in New York really? City. Really? In Shea State in the Mets. Why? State because the Mets fan hates Chipper Jones. He destroyed us. Every year he destroyed us. He's good. He's very good. But you don't know Hank Aaron? And Hank Aaron from the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Do you know? I just know Chipper Jones. <laughs> Mickey Mantle, is that he on? Mickey oh, Mantle, you know Mickey Mantle? Who? Mickey Mouse? Oh. Mickey Mantle. Oh my gosh. He doesn't know Mickey Mantle. You see, like, I am the wrong person. And he only knows Broadway anyway, so. Jay, you know, you know sports. Yeah. Okay, do you know who married, what ex Yankee married Marilyn Monroe? There you go. Some guy. Yeah, the guy that makes coffee. I was about to say, <laughs> it tastes so good. He created Mr. Coffee. He did? <laughs> really? The machine. Wow. He didn't create it. He didn't it. create he it. Was he was a commercial for it. You could have said, what difference does it make? He, he, anyway. he popularized it. That's what he did. He did. 
Monroe. And he was married to Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. Did Joe you know that? Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio. And then she had an affair Wait. with John F. Kennedy. Wait. When she was married to Joe DiMaggio. Was she married to him yeah. when she had an affair? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that? I saw Joe DiMaggio play ball. Wow. Did you see Mantle play? The same wow. game. Yogi Berra? Wow. I around, got to meet Joe. That's the, the oldest memory I have. It was around three or four years old. My okay. grandfather took me to Yankee Stadium. I saw Joe DiMaggio. Wasn't Joe wow. DiMaggio mentioned in the song? Don't yeah. Where did you go? Joe, Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio. Yeah. Something Jesus loved you more. Everybody was upset that Kennedy, there was alleged he was having an affair with his wife, Marilyn. And oh. DiMaggio was an icon. Kennedy, is that true? And, 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 and um, DiMaggio was an icon with the Yankees. Now, who played first base for the Yankees? I know you know this. Who said, I'm the luckiest man in the, in the face, face of, of the, the earth. earth? What? Another icon. They call him the sports. Iron Horse. I'm not even a Yankee fan, and I know this stuff. Do you know who that is? But and if he, you know and who he, it is. And, he, and they named the disease after him. That's right. <laughs> what? There's a disease named after, after him, him that killed him. <laughs> Lou Gehrig? Lou Gehrig. <laughs> I know diseases, oh but God. I don't know baseball players. <laughs> I should have How asked the doctor that? questions. Well, then you'll know if you know this, if you know diseases, you'll know who the Mets. <laughs> you know diseases. You'll know who the Mets just retired at, Shea, at City Field, Shea Stadium. Would always be Shea Stadium to me. Uh, it was put his number was put in the rafters, number sixteen. Who is that? LeBron James. No. <laughs> what? It wasn't Seaver, was it? But they called him, huh? It wasn't Seaver, was it? Number I don't six, remember six. the numbers. It wasn't Seaver. No, it no. was Doc. Yeah. Doc? Doc. I don't know. Gooden? Gooden. It was Doc Gooden. Oh, my God. Wow. Sorry. I want to cry. <laughs> you know Daryl Strawberry? I yes. am so lost at this moment. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. These are, these are icons. Now, Doc Gooden had just retired his jersey. And Doc Gooden had a problem because he was sniffing the lines up the first base path. Oh. <laughs> that was the biggest joke. He got into cocaine. Oh, so got so it happen. Oh, the so Yankees. Strawberry. But the Yankees <laughs> took him in, and Strawberry left and went with his friend Gooden into the Yankees as well. What was his friend, Blackberry? Strawberry. Blackberry? Daryl Strawberry. Did he have a friend named Blackberry and Blueberry? No. Raspberry? But those two guys were iconic, and they went to play for the Yankees, and they broke every Mets heart. You don't know the anguish that we've had. What baseball player did we take from the Yankees? Like the a third anguish. Now, okay, I'll give you another one. What famous Yankee died in a plane crash? Oh, I know. He was a catcher. He was my idol at one time. Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson. What third baseman was an icon? You, you and guys Frank can play this game all oh, day long. You guys long. know the, the shortstop, right? What's the famous short, shortstop that, that was managing, owning the Marlins? Oh, Marlins. You're not Marlin fans either? Bob Marley? Derek Jeter? Who's a cheater? Not cheater, Dieter. Jeter. Derek, Derek Jeter? You know Derek, Derek Jeter? Jeter? One of the best shortstops ever. Probably one of the best. And then there's a guy from Baltimore. Who played third base and shortstop? The Orioles. Robinson. Robinson Brooks. played third. Who played short? Who broke? Who was the bro broke the record for most consecutive games? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot his name. Cal, uh, Cal Ripken, Jr. Ripken Jr. Do you know that that man went to work? Look at the record for 19 years without missing a game or taking a day off. 19 years. It's amazing, right? Think about that. that. Who do you know that didn't go to work in 19 years and take one day off? He did. He has the longest streak in the. And that streak will never be. Jackie there. Robinson bunts for his first major I do league know hit, Robinson. April 17th, 1947. They changed the game. That was two years after World War II ended, and they changed the uh, the skin tone. They just tone. named the stadium in Daytona, the Jackie Robinson Stadium, as a national monument, national really? icon. It's a Jackie Robinson Stadium in Daytona. Who was the first African American baseball player? Jackie Robinson. Was Jackie Robinson at the major league level? Mm -hmm. We should all go see a baseball game like we did that one time. Remember that? Remember that? You were growing popcorn out of your hair. Uh, yeah, this, this, 
nutcase was sitting behind me throwing pop. When did like, Satchel Paige come I into was, the majors? No, he played. He played in. He played in the Black League. But when did Satchel Paige? He was come in the Negro in? League. He's and Negro Satchel League. was um, before Robinson. Yeah. But he wasn't signed to the major league contract. I think there was some kind of agreement when he went back and forth. Yeah. You know, that's a good question. Was he after Robinson? Was he after Robinson or before Might have been. Robinson? Do you know who Satchel Page was? Let's, let's ask our friendly producer yeah, in the studio played, to I mean, see. He played in the, he, was I Satchel remember, Page he before or after 50s, Jackie Robinson? Baseball. Satchel Page is the guy who told all his outfielders and infielders, everybody sit down. And I don't know who he was pitching to, but it was somebody famous. It could have been Bay Ruth, for all I know. And he told everybody to sit. And everybody says, what are you talking about? Sit down! And he struck out to whoever it was. It was the greatest pitching deal ever in the history of the game. That's how Satchel was. He was that good. He must have been 53 when he was pitching. 53? It's like you pitching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a commercial break. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Brooklyn Cafe TV for exclusive behind-the-scenes content or... Coming into the studio for a live show of the Brooklyn Cafe or any other shows that we produce right here at Amp Media Production Studios. More to come on the other side of this commercial break. We'll be right back. You Do you have an idea for a show or a podcast? Do you want the opportunity to be on TV? Amp Media Productions is partnered with True Oldies Real Radio Station and powered by many online platforms such as Roku, Facebook, YouTube, and even Amazon Fire to help amplify your impact. Do you want your voice to reach a wide audience? Call us today at 866-224-5422. Le Sorel Restaurant. Home of the authentic Italian tradition, offers a large menu that consists of seafood, steak, homemade pasta, brick oven pizza, and homemade desserts including a wide wine selection. We also have the best bar in Boca Raton with delicious cocktails, homemade limoncello, cappuccino, Italian espresso, brandy, and other specialties, open every day with a lunch and dinner menu. For more information or to make a reservation, contact lesorellerestaurant.com or call 561-235-5301. Ant Media Productions is excited to announce our expansion into North Miami. With our experienced team of radio and TV professionals, we are dedicated to bringing North Miami the highest quality audio and visual production services. Whether you need radio or television commercials, podcasts, music videos, or audio and visual storytelling, we can provide the solutions to help you reach your goals. Our team is reliable, innovative, and creative, and we're ready to help you develop the perfect product. With our competitive rates and personalized service, you can trust that your project is in the best hands. Contact us today to get started on your project. 866-224-5422. Looking for art to add to your collection? Well, look no further. Here at Ant Media Studios, we house tons of art, ranging from abstract paintings to realistic portraits. Come on in and find the art that fits your home. Any and all art is up for sale, so pick yours up today. Stop by at 2400 Northwest 2nd Avenue, Boca Raton, Florida, 33431. See you there. A successful woman in business means having the courage to own who you are. We understand the challenges faced by women and we are here to help. Our team is here to develop the best strategy designed just for you. Your path is unique and with the right tools you can accomplish your dream. From radio to TV, from podcasting to magazines, we create the visibility to amplify your impact in business. At New Dawn Media, we are here to help bring your message forward and help your business flourish. It is time for your message to be seen and your voice to be heard. 
contact us at 866-224-5422 or brooklyncafe.tv. Your voice can make a difference. Give me the mozzarella. Give me the mozzarella. Give me the give me the give me the mozzarella. Give me the mozzarella. Pizza rica, tasty rich and pizza at 2001 Northwest Boca Raton Boulevard or contact 561-8663. Give me the give me the give me the mozzarella. Give me the mozzarella. Give me the mozzarella. Give me the give me the give me the mozzarella. Have you filed for disability benefits but were denied by the Social Security Administration? Or do you need to apply for benefits and are overwhelmed with paperwork? Are you between the ages of 50 to 63 and can no longer work because of an illness or injury? Thousands of hardworking Americans are in your situation. They file for disability benefits every month and are unnecessarily denied their much-needed benefit check. Call now for a no-obligation, free evaluation. We can help you nearly double your chances of approval and get your benefit checks faster. We understand the physical, emotional and financial impact and will share our insider expertise. There is a time limit to apply. We're here to help you get your disability claim filed and paid as soon as possible. Please, time is limited. So, if you are between the ages of 50 to 63 and can no longer work because of an illness or injury, call right now and let us help you file your disability claim with the Social Security Administration. You've been watching the Brooklyn Cafe Show. Join us each day and after hours as we talk about the hot topics to open the conversations and share a few laughs. Now, back to Dawn and Freddie S. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm caught in the trap. I can't walk out because I love you too much, baby. Why can't you see what you're doing to me? When you don't believe a word I'm saying We can't go on together With suspicious minds And we can't build our dreams On suspicious minds So with the no friend I know Say hello. Was I still see suspicion in your eyes? Here we go again. I where I've been. You can't see the tears on me. I'm crying. We can't. What you doing to me? 
When you don't believe a word I'm saying We're caught in a trap I can't walk out Because I love you too much, baby Now back to dawn and ready on top of us We're not caught in a trap here at the Broken Cafe You can leave anytime you want Thank you very much He's maniac. The many voices of Baxton Summoner. Baxton, turn on the light, please. You know, the many personalities of Baxton. He's a better saint. I had to tell you, this morning you like almost broke my heart when you talked about when you were born. Yeah. Because as a, as a mom, we love all of our kids mm -hmm. equally but differently because every child is different. Oh, yeah. And every experience is different. Mm -hmm. But you've had an amazing life. Oh, yeah. And you, know, you were born to the perfect parents that you should be born to because oh, yeah. they were able to get you all the things that you needed in life. You know, I am incredibly grateful because they have sacrificed a lot of stuff to make sure that I'd be okay. And, like, I did not know how bad it actually was until one day I was on the phone with my uncle and he broke down a bit and he said uh, he wasn't expecting me to survive at all. People were expecting me to just go. And when I was born, I don't know what the issue was. I did not have enough blood in my body, so they were losing me, but somebody in my family donated a fair amount of their blood to me. Wow. So I'm here right now. I'm still standing. <laughs> well, Dawn gave you the mom's version. As a dad, I'm looking in Frank's books to see what tree Frank had you the same situation. Frank was born how many months premature? Two. Back in You're the, the time. one that gave him the blood? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, he was born. Pre Frank was born premature. He was Back a in a time when preemies didn't have the. They didn't make it. They didn't, they have, didn't, the have, they didn't have, have incubators or anything. So, yeah, I was less than three pounds. Wow. wow. Really? And I wasn't supposed to survive. It said then that the, the doctor told my parents, just nothing we can do here, take them home. So my mother, that, I couldn't fit in a bassinet. I was too small. So they just lumped up and they made like a pot, like a, what, like a big pot you would cook a turkey in. They put towels in there and put me in that. And then to keep me warm, she had to boil water. And she, made, she made pots of boiling water and then put the hot water around the pot to keep me warm. Where were you, where, were, where did you grow up at, where? I was born in Washington Heights. In Mother the Cabrini Hospital, on the hospitals up on the hill. Washington above Holocaust. Heights in Manhattan? Manhattan. What street? Audubon Avenue. What street? 220 Audubon Avenue. 220. Yeah. Between, what's it, be, I forget the two, it's be, what, Audubon is between St. Nicholas and I forget the one that's on the Yes, side. it is. I know exactly where you were born. Yeah. I was an auxiliary. That was my beat, Seaman Avenue. Oh, here we go. Comes I think we moved, <laughs> from there, we moved to South Bronx. Where wow. in the South Bronx? I don't remember. It was... Cowell Avenue? It Tell was me up, Cowell it was, Avenue. It was above the Yankee Stadium where the railroad track is run by the park. Up there, near Fordham Road. Yeah. Well, Fordham Road, okay. Yeah. And then, but then, then we went to move to Queens Village, and then we moved to Long Island. But he grew up I, was so I, I was so small that uh, I, I was too small to be breastfed. Wow. And the nipple in the bottle was too small to fit in my mouth. So my mother had to wake me up every hour and feed me with an eyedropper. Isn't that amazing? See this so then when I got older, what happened? I woke up every hour. <laughs> That's all you knew. That's why there's seven years between me and my brother. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing, isn't I it? I grew up in a lot of my stomping grounds. He was there. But the first. fact that he grew up and all these stories, look, you got, when you were a little boy, you had things too. So maybe it's no coincidence that we all end up here when we do. The odd bunch. The odd bunch. You heard Mateo this morning talk about when he was 10 years old, he had like this awakening moment of his voice calling to him. And ever since that, he's had supernatural, supernatural experiences happening. Well, it's interesting because some of us grow up to be the storytellers, some of us grow up to be the story and to tell the story. So it all depends. And look, he's, 
Well, he's an author, and he writes, and he tells the story. This one sings it. Um, it's just lucky to be here sometimes. And I'm looking up your book, Frank, for Samael of Sarah, the latest version. That's the latest one. And it is all, it's in bookstores all over, all over the, the place. place. Not just Amazon. No, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's yeah, it's it's on it's on the international list. Whoever wants to pick it up is in a bookstore. So. Now, have you is Barnes and Noble still doing where you can go in and do a book signing and stuff? Can you arrange something like that? Yeah, they don't do that? but they don't. You know, they don't really go for independent guys. You know, you got to have a publisher behind you and do that. So they don't really do indie authors. So I didn't realize Semiel is the king of all demons. Yep. His, the angel of death, he's the, the husband angel of, death. of Lilith. He's from, he is, his planet is Mars. That's what I'm reading. Yep. And he is the he was one of the He was of one of the original watchers. He was one of the original archangels that left with, when Lucifer left. So apparently he's the enemy of Michael, which is the archangel of, so I guess, protection. Yeah. Why did Luther leave? Because he thought he was just as good as God. So where did he come from? And God from? said, uh, no, you're done. But and where he did took, he and come he took from? 200, he took 200 angels with him. But where did he come from that he would think? God was created the angels. So why would God put in, stall in him, what, free will to think that he's Well, as good? he had so much power. He sat at, he, Lucifer sat at originally at God's right hand. He was like God's second in command. And Lucifer said, I don't need you. And then God said, goodbye. It sounds like today's era yep, of sounds man, like today. the way man acts. So I based most of my books on man's faith, man's lack of faith, and I introduced the archangels, which in the book of Enoch are called the watchers. They watch and protect earth. And Samael, which is the last one, is basically uh, the reincarnation of the bad guys, the Watchers. And Samael is actually this character, Samael, who's called Samael of Sarah, because his mother's name was Sarah, is the son of Satan. And he comes to Earth and causes a big stir. Everybody starts to like him. And God said, no, nah, this can't happen. So through the Watchers, he's eliminated. And there's a big, huge tuss on Earth. And the people are going, oh, you killed the next Messiah, blah, blah, blah. And then God said, I did it last time with a flood, but I'm not going to do it next time, this time with a flood. And you need to be punished. And that's how that book ends. God punishes Earth. And folklore says we should not even mention the name. For fear of awakening him. No, a lot of this, I haven't read this one yet, but the last book, when you awaken the demons, they yeah. do what they, they do what they do. They do what they do. So, now do you truthfully it. believe in, what? I got a picture to show you guys. Do you truthfully believe in demons? Not as an oh, author, yeah. but as a person? They're wrong. So you believe in it, because you were involved with the, uh, the church and, and the statue and all these other things. I was showed the gates of hell. When were you shown the gates of hell? At one of the meetings at the um, apparition site. And how the gates of hell look like? It was awful. Huh. I don't even. I don't. I can't even talk about it. It was. Who showed you the gates of hell? Virgin Mary. Wow. The statue that we have here. Yeah. I was. I, we were in a meeting, and I closed my eyes, and she took me above a church. I don't know where this church was. And then she took me down into a hole, and I followed her into a hole. And then she brought me in, and I, as I looked down in deeper in the hole, I saw the gates of hell, and I told her I had to get out of here. And she said, she said, and she said basically, in my mind, she said, this, I wanted to show you this is what this is. And then I came out. It was awful. And you write about it. You write of some it's darkness awful. and some awful things. Yeah, it was, it was not nice. So were you told to explain? No. Were you told to, to I wasn't tell? Given, I wasn't given any direct message to say this or to say that. 
I was because told, most of I, was told I was told that two archangels are with me. Archangel Uriel, which is has the wisdom of God, and Archangel Gabriel, which is the messenger of God. And through their intersection, I, I was given messages. So the Samuel of Sarah is the last book of my of my faith-based sci-fi series, which starts with Gabriel's Chalice. Gabriel's Chalice takes place the months before Judgment Day, based on Luke twenty-one eleven, which is in the, one of the verses in the book, which says there'll be earthquakes and plagues in various places, terrors in the sky, and great signs before he comes back. And Samuel of Sarah takes place thirteen hundred and sixty years later, on Mars. So. Mars and Earth. So uh, I was, how I started that sci-fi series is when I was told those, those two angels are on my shoulder, I was working at the time. I was, I didn't, had, I had, I didn't have any idea to be a writer. I had no, it, well, that wasn't part of my thing, you know. I was a purchasing manager for an electronics company. So I'd go to work every morning and for inspiration, I would look at, I would, we have a Bible in our, uh, on display in our dining room. So and for inspiration, before I go to work, I'd just go to the Bible, flip it open, and whatever I would read would be my inspirational for the day. So one morning, I read Luke 21, 11, which says, there'll be plagues and earthquakes in various places, there'll be terrors and signs, great signs. What's, that's basically what, Jesus was telling his disciples what was going to happen when he returns, although they didn't know what he was talking about at the time. I said, all right, thank you, went to work. Four mornings in a row, I went up to the Bible, opened it up, and I opened up the same passage. So then I went, hmm, there's my message. So I was writing, uh, I had an idea that I was going to start writing a book called, it ended up being Triangle of Chaos, which is about terror attacks in the United States. I stopped writing that book and wrote Gable's Chalice. And Gable's Chalice was my first book. And that was, in, that was published in 2011. And now I'm 13 books later, it's Samuel and Sarah. And I've got four more books that I've written I haven't released yet. So. But all of these books have a tendency of, of showing and explaining something. They all, they, all, they all say something or explain something that for some strange reason, happen. Well, I don't so think it's a, a lot of these books. Reason. I hope they don't happen. But, but but they do happen. So my my question to you is, do you know they're going to happen? I have been. I have a premonition that they're probably going to. I have a premonition that this thing is what possibly could happen. That can change. Any, the way people react, the way people treat their lives and change their lives can change the future in the present. So I can say something may happen, but something may happen to change that. However, if we don't change and we keep down the path we're going, it probably will happen. So basically, these are warnings. But at the end, the good guys win. If, Not always. If we have faith. Not always. Well, in my mind, they do. You know, it's funny because if you go back in history, uh, religious wars were the most vicious. Yep. And millions and millions and millions of people wow. died. It took years, some of them 20 years. You've got to remember, you only lived till you were 20, 24. That was it. So for a war to go for 21 years, that's a long time. And it's been vicious, and man has always been vicious towards man. The wars, you know, it wasn't like you had a plane flying over your head. And, and we always lost faith. Of course, trip, well, we never had it. The trip from Egypt to Israel should only have taken about 10 days. 40 years. They were there 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> I have to say something, because I was thinking about that this morning, and I was thinking about my journey of faith, and it took me until I was in my 30s. Seriously. So, you know, that's not I so bad, it. though. Huh? That's not too bad. Because some people don't even pick it up until they're over 30s, in their 40s, and looking for something. Because right. everybody's searching for something. Yeah. It's funny, because sure. sometimes you look back and you say, okay, this happened, and it started my journey. 
and then you can point out things that happened even earlier, mm -hmm. but you didn't, you weren't conscious of the fact that you were on your journey. Right. You know, if you did something good for someone, that was part of your journey. If you did something that you classified as bad towards someone, that's still part of your journey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we have to learn as human beings, number one, just to get along, and don't be so judgmental on the bad and praise the good, you know? Take the small victory. People don't realize that God chooses people whether they're, most of the people that God chooses were not good people. But they're the ones that need the saving. But they're the ones that need the saving. Yeah. And people don't we're realize, all, I'm sorry. Moses. <laughs> Wait a minute, we're all needing of saving. Don't worry. Moses, we're, 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 we're we're Moses never here. reached the promised land either. And he was the one that was chosen by right. God because he, he Moses, messed up right. in 40 years. Well, so right. he never made it either. So, it's, it, it, Just to be considered, uh, to have an opportunity. I always said to me, if you live to be, my father lived to be 88. And he said one day to me, God says the human is, I'm going to live, you're going to live to your 88 years old to either learn a lesson or to teach a lesson. He says, but the gift for me is waking up every morning for 88 years. And for him, that was his moment. It didn't matter. My, my father used to say he wanted to live to be 100 and be shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I, I just think it's, it's, um, it's all in perspective. You know, the Bible teaches you the opportunity to, to think in perspective and, and to do the right thing. You know the right from wrong. You know right from wrong. Some people do. Some people don't. Everybody does. Some people Everybody right knows is right a from wrong. They just, it's just, they just, they have free will. They do what they want. That's right. The right. ego sometimes devastates right from wrong. But you know what something is right and when something is wrong. You're Why right. you do it is a different animal. Okay, guilt and all Yeah, but then there's stuff. guilt also. And then there's well, living the sins of our fathers that we should not l live. You shouldn't have guilt. If you do something you feel guilty, you did the wrong thing. No, because there's some guilt in my religion that you live with. You tell me Italian, it's the same thing. It's, it's just this guilt Jewish. that's been instilled what in us. What is Jewish guilt? 100%. It's like chicken soup. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, everything. Puerto Ricans have guilt. We're guilty, you feel guilty. <laughs> Uh, you're never guilty. You never feel guilty. That's not true. That's not true. Not that, like me. Nah, well, you're you're a little bit over the edge. I mean, I feel badly for this one. I'm like not guilty. But, but why? Why do you feel bad for this one? Well, look at him. He's a grown man. I He's know. getting his <laughs> masters. He has the gift of singing. Everybody loves him. You have a On picture? The board. Yeah. Am I going to be hurt by this picture? No, I, sh I should just. It's a picture of me when I was a baby, and I think you can just... A baby? That looked like yesterday. Next to it. No, <laughs> next to it. Oh, you mean the one to the right. Like, like, like you can just tell on the shape and the skull. No, you look the same. No, his skull <laughs> is not formed the right way. Yeah. Yeah, but we know, we, listen, we know that. There are people that were born with one eye. There are people that were born with the cleft palate. Yeah. palate. Now they can fix that. Back in the day, they couldn't fix that. Right. And, and the psychological aspects of it was more devastating than, than having it. But he's a grown man. I, I don't feel sorry for him. I know. I, I, I am me. proud Not of him. Not at all. I'm so proud of him. Because you've come. I'm proud of that. You've come yeah, all the way it. around, and you're doing great. You know? Now, this one over here next to you, and that's another story. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a commercial break. <laughs> More to come on the other side of this break. Give us a call, 888-994-4995. Studio A. I always tell you the all the time, one. the, the guilty, guilty one does believe in the dark side. And you always tell me, no, no, it's not there. I do believe there is one. Cause, no, because you use the word believe. And that, to me, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't believe. You don't think it exists. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is I don't believe. Look what's happening. Look, what, look what's happening to our world. And tell me evil doesn't exist. It's like I didn't say that. Books. She said dark side. And evil exists only simply because we choose for it to exist. All right, more to come on this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Am I wrong? Do you want the opportunity to have a TV show or podcast? Now, at Ant Media Productions, you can host your very own visual broadcast anywhere around the world. With our talented group of creators, we will provide you with show elements, board operations, and any on-screen visuals you'd like to showcase. All you must do is log on to your computer and communicate with your viewers. Contact Ant Media Productions at 866 
224-5422 or email hello at amp2.tv to start your own show today. Born in Marseille, France, Max Lazega creates whimsical and free-flowing interpretive art. His 40 years in the construction industry created the foundation for his craft. His unique work displays his view of the future with bold and playful combinations of materials and processes, but the methodology remains consistent. He fuses recycled materials and discarded building supplies into a fresh, well-executed approach. Lazega has lived in Miami, Florida most of his life, where he pursues his lifelong passion of creating industrial art. For more information, contact Max Lazega at artworkstudios.org or 786-326-8873. Love the Brooklyn Cafe? Don't miss out on some of the latest merch we have available. Need a new shirt? The Brooklyn Cafe has you covered. We have a variety of shirts in all sizes, ranging from the classic cafe shirt to the highly coveted colorful hot dog shirt. Need something for cold weather? Why not grab one of our cafe hoodies? Or you can snuggle up with one of our soft silk touch fabric blankets. The Brooklyn Cafe has everything you need from clothing about the show to our signature coffee blends and mugs. Get it while supplies last. Stephanie Jaffe is a world-renowned artist who creates one-of-a-kind pieces. Using a keen sense of color and composition, her vibrant collages and mosaics integrate eclectic elements such as vintage keepsakes and fine china with blown glass and fired clay to create whimsical arrangements. For more information about her work, come down to the Brooklyn Cafe TV studio or go to stephaniejaffeart.com. Do you suffer from neuropathy? Maybe you do, and you don't even know it. Do you have numbness, pain, burning, or tingling in your hands and feet? Muscle weakness, loss of balance, muscle twitching? Are you not sleeping? Does it feel like pins and needles in your hands and feet? Maybe you don't even have any feeling at all. These symptoms can make life unbearable, but there is help at the Lighthouse Medical Center. Call 754 754- 222-6642 for a no-charge consultation and say goodbye to your neuropathy symptoms. That is 754-222-6642 or visit us online at lighthousemedicalcenter.com. Do you have diabetes? If you have insurance, you may qualify for a new continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends. Spend more time in range significantly lower your A1C, and share important data with loved ones and caregivers. Most importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Take charge of your health. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and have seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for a CGM today. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances cover continuous glucose monitors, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the CGM Health Hotline now. You've been watching the Brooklyn Cafe Show. Join us each day and after hours as we talk about the hot topics to open the conversations and share a few laughs. Now, back to Dawn and Freddie S. Once again, here we go. He's a fool. Don't I know it? But a fool can have his chance. I'm in love, and don't I show it like a babe in arms. Love's the same old sad sensation. Lately, I've not slept a wink since this half pint imitation put me on. I'm a wild again 
beguiled again A simpering, a whimpering child again Bewitched, bothered and bewildered Am I? Couldn't sleep, wouldn't sleep when love came and told me I shouldn't sleep. Bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. Am I? He's cold, I agree. He can laugh, but I love it. All the bless on me. I'll sing to him each spring to I've done pretty well, I think But this half-pint imitation Put me on the brink I've sinned a lot I've been a lot And now I'm not sweet Seventeen a lot Bewitched, bothered, and bewildered Am <laughs> Listen, I got great. I, well, it's true. It sort of changes the equation. I got, I got great news. We were just approved, just approved, to put commercials in for the NBA and the NHL playoff games. There's a Heat game tonight, isn't there? The Heat are playing the 76ers tonight, one game, and whoever wins that game is rewarded by going to New York City on Saturday and playing the Knicks at 3 o'clock. Interesting. But the interesting aspect is I watched the Lakers knock off the Pelicans yesterday of New Orleans. New Orleans was favored. And the way this whole thing sets up, New Orleans now gets to play for the eighth seed even though they lost. If you were the, ninth, the tenth seed and you lose, you're out. The ninth and tenth, you're out. If they win, you get another shot to be a seed. It's just complicated. But the bottom line is, if you want to put your commercial... Now, tomorrow's game is sold out. So if you want to put your, your, your business on television, ESPN, ESPN+, Plus, they're going to be showing the games, you too can put your commercial on there. And we got a special deal working for, with them. Um, and you, you can't have a prior contract with Comcast. If you do, you're over there. If you don't, come and see us. I will take care of it. I saw the pricings for Boca. Trust me, you want to call me. It is very, very affordable. And the numbers are tremendous. And then on top of all this basketball stuff, I owe you an apology. Ooh. 
you and every other woman in here yesterday. Yeah. Because that young lady is only making $436,000 over the next four years, where the NBA players are making 50, 60 million, same year, same contract, same level, and everything else. They only play 40 games in the WNBA. With the NBA, you play 82 games. So that this is a disparity in the amount of money being brought in. There is two. There is two billion dollars brought in in the NBA per year. Only four hundred thousand in the WNBA per year. So I want to bring in more money. But I owe you an apology because even Biden said, "What kind of crap is this? That you're the you're a superstar in the women's league and you don't get paid." And we had all athletes going to Russia and all over the place to play to make up so they could pay their bills. They get thrown in jail, which is what happened. Um, so I owe you an apology because I didn't realize that the amount of disparity is, uh, is tremendous. It is. It isn't even close. Not even close. True. And that kid can play that was drafted number one. Even Curry said, this is just not fair. Now, the NBA players who are making $150 million, why don't you guys get together, make yeah. a pool, and put some of that money where your mouth is? Because you don't need $150 million. You know, the guy in baseball, well, you don't need yesterday. $700 million. What do you million need dollars. all that money for? It's just ridiculous. What? Because they feel that they earn their stripes. I can't, you know. You know what happens when you get too big? Yeah, but I can't argue the point. It's like, it's like the book over here. Somebody offers $700 million to do a show because she's the best at what she does. I can't say she don't deserve it. Can't do that. True. You can't tell LeBron that he don't deserve it, Michael that he don't deserve it. Those guys... They play. My point is, if you want to help somebody out, take some money. You could take $150 million. You could take $10 million from these ball players. The average salary of NBA players is $9 million. The average. The average. $9 million. You could help a whole lot of people. I'm just saying. Yeah, but even I, if you took half and, and did, I know some players do, 10%, do that, but not, not 10%. as many as they should. You know, go to, it back into the inner city and help help those kids. Well, they well, do. I think you know, the NBA do. should subsidize the WNBA. The WNBA. Yeah, they talked about that. The problem is that you got owners, and a lot of owners say they don't make the same money that the Knicks do because their markets right. are small. Well, then maybe it's on a sliding scale. You could do that. Yeah. You could do that. They could take the luxury tax and put that to it again. You know, it's a, it's a different business. You but got you've got to give her a lot of credit for doing what she loves. She becomes so good at it. She's still not making what the guys are making, but she stayed with it because of her passion, because she loves basketball. It, she was not in it for the money. I mean, she's making great endorsements, but because she loves basketball. That's what and they're saying, that she's going to do well with endorsements. Because ever since, obviously, since you're a kid in sports, you grow to do what you love. Yeah, but she was the number one drafted. What about the last draft? That person ain't going to even make $5,000. She's going to make nothing in the draft. Well, it's all about, you know, you, you hate to say it, but it's all about the money. If the, if the league doesn't pull in the revenue, right. they can't that's pay the revenue happens. out. Women, women's sports isn't as big as men's sports. That's just yeah, the that's, bottom that's, line. That's, that's the bottom line. Except yeah. that the college game between Iowa and whoever, uh, 24 million people watched it. So there's got to be something in the game well, that people watch. I was going to say, do you think it's because it's not as hyped on media, right? It's not as accessible, women's sports. Maybe it's going to be now. But you can turn on any channel, and you can watch all the NBA. Sorry. You can watch all football, all men. But we're not publicizing the female sports, the women's sports. You have to actually look for it or find it. Well, there's more WNBA games played now on television than there was ever, because I remember a few years See, ago. See, they weren't even showing they it, weren't so even showing. that's but the it's thing. it's supply and demand. It's like, yes. w w are the eyeballs watching? If they're not watching, they're not going to play it. That's, but I, that's just but when you start comparing it to corn toss, what is that? Cornhole? Oh, yeah. Cornhole. <laughs> cornhole. <laughs> or bowling. And you know what? I know everybody's seen at least one cornhole game. I know it for a fact. Well, it was on ESPN. Yes. See? That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, I, I, I get off the, the subject. I just wanted to apologize in public. Get your commercial on. The numbers are staggering for the NBA. If sold out, the Heat, if they beat the Sixers tonight, which I really don't want to face the Heat. Um, the Knicks, I don't want the Knicks to face the Heat. I'd rather them face Philadelphia. Because I'm going to tell you, the Heat last year were in the eighth seed. 
and they made it all the way to the finals, and they were about this close of knocking off the Denver Nuggets. I don't want to play the Heat. I don't want to play the Heat. And I don't want to play the Florida Panthers either. You got a Florida issue. Well, they're playing the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Oh, Tampa oh, Bay always be a rough beats game. them. So I'm hoping that Tampa Bay eliminate. But, but I'm going to tell you, Florida do. is a freaking good team. My Rangers were number one. They got the President's Trophy. Congratulations. But no, the team that wins the President's Trophy usually loses. Usually only, only four teams have ever won the Cup for the history of winning the President's Trophy. So the Knicks, are, I mean, the Rangers are, might have to work cut out for them. A lot of sports happening. Anyway. A lot of sports. So back to what we were talking about. Oh, J.C. Driesen also, May 14th. Save the day, get your tickets, events.amp2.tv. Tickets start at only $18. It's May 14th, 7.30 p.m. at the Movies of Delray. If you are groups of 10 or more or you want to go with your friends, get all your tickets together and save $2 a ticket for special VIP pricing. And it's two days after Mother's Day, so it's a nice Mother's Day gift. We're going to do something for the moms in the audience as well. I still don't know what the hell we're going to do, but we're going to do something nice. Uh, so get mom over there, buy her a ticket, and let's have some fun. They'll uh, make sure that they take pictures with JC for the mom. So maybe Dawn the book will be there. She's got her show today called Faith Stories. Frank's show is tomorrow, The Artist Loft, because this month in April they are every week. Every week? Every week. Tomorrow's Thursday? Tomorrow's, Tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday already. Oh my God, I'm, I, miss, I missed a day. You missed a day. You missed today. And I like during commercial break how you guys go round robin in all of these conversations. I just get to sit back and enjoy the conversation. Well, yeah, you started it. <laughs> <laughs> As every woman does. <laughs> just saying. I almost put my foot in mouth. But it's, an, it's a conversation that I think the media has a lot to do with it. I think the media has changed people's perspective on faith. You almost have to turn it off to go inward and believe in yourself and just stop all that outside noise and say, I've got this, or whatever mantras or things that you know or you believe in to hold faith. Because if you watch enough of the stuff that's on TV, it's enough to make you think, well, maybe that's right, or maybe a part of that's right, or the noise just makes you so crazy that you can't even find yourself amongst the noise. But why is it that everything has to be right or wrong? You know, if you have an argument with somebody... It's a lot of gray. ...that water is wet. Water is wet. Let's argue. You say it's not. You say it is, and I say it's not. Right? So if I freeze water, and, and if I freeze water, it takes a second before it melts in your hand. Unless you're in the freezer with it, it's not wet. It's solid. Is it still water? I didn't say that. It's water wet. Yes. Okay. But, <laughs> but the... Water. But the argument is, there is, shouldn't be an argument. So what? Water is wet. Water is not wet. What difference does it make? What difference does it make when somebody only says, my way is the only way, I'm right and you're wrong? I, and look at the wars that we're involved in. These, these things go back centuries about land and, and about religion and about growth and about who you believe in, what you believe yeah, in. The whole they've been night. fighting in the Middle East for 5,000 years. I mean, enough already. But don't you just wonder why? I want to ask you, you, tell you were you there 5,000 years ago, Frank, is what I want to say to you, like, you, what, the, were you, there what 5, you learned years then, ago? don't you think they would have learned by now? Sometimes I feel like I was. I think they're like, Fr just, Frank, you were there, tell but me. But it just rotates like a, like a mouse on a wheel over and over, the same stupidity. How much stupidity can you fit in a five-pound bag? It's almost, like, it's almost like it's a challenge now, today. <laughs> How stupid people can is be. Is it ego? It's it, the man with the most most blood on his hands wins a country with the most I don't know why I do know why because it's protection and if you're going to protect your country then I'm going to protect my country and I don't want to protect so now I'm going to go on the offensive so I'm always on the defensive it's a whole political no matter which way you look at it too many people's lives are have been lost right. well, and then, and well, then and it, it's biblical too because they it they, is biblical. they wanted to destroy Israel they've said that they want to destroy Israel. Bottom line, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. But, but if you it. look at Nazi I mean, Germany wanting to destroy Israel, it the, goes the all the way leader. back to Abraham. Yep. And if you sons. look at all, but I don't. I just I don't get. But don't you wonder why? I don't care why. I'm tired of wondering why. <laughs> but if it goes back to biblical, why 
Why create hate and destruction when you're writing the book? Why just not leave it out? Why even put it in because there? Because they're making a point for you to read it. The Bible? Yeah, want you to. Yeah. So this is a right and wrong equation again. Because men wrote it. And, and, and Dawn and I are going to dance again. That's we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, that <laughs> Dawn is going to dance again. Man wrote it. You know, Actually, God wrote it. And, and, there he, and there you have it. God wrote it. Okay, it's like when I got married, she told me, I'll never leave you. And we interpret, God told me. And that's yes, why there's will. so many interpretations of each verse. You know, the bottom line for me is if you live here or you live here, you all live in the same planet. I don't care that there's a bigger rock on your side and more grass on mine. Here, have some grass. Give right, me a we rock. Need, we people, need more people, love and grace. Pe people in the world. tend to forget that we're nobody's leaving this planet alive. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny. We're only renting this space here. My hearse is going to have a U-Haul because I'm taking it with me. It doesn't make any sense. What are you fighting about? Why don't you enjoy living life? And maybe having dinner with somebody and have a conversation, not an argument, because that's too easy. A conversation, maybe you learn like a smidgen. Instead of having this fight with one another, and at the end of the day when you both die, neither one of you are right. Sure. Because you can't take it with you. I just don't get it. I just, and I love it when Putin goes to the archbishop of the church and he wears that funny hat and he says, Yes, my son, God says to go forward. And God never said that, you liar. Come here, I'll smack you. It's a lie. It's just lies. Man. See, man walks on two feet. We walk on two feet? Two feet, right? Two feet. And what they write, That's what they basic. sing, and what they do, depending on what cloth they're wearing, because they'll tell you they're closer to God and all this. I'm going to tell you, believe what you want. I don't care. You want to say you're closer to God, fine. But the bottom line is that we all should get along with one another. That's why I love Frank's book so much. If you read Gabriel's Chalice, all the crazy and the fighting and everything, until they actually start finding what they're searching for, and you see the greatness of God and faith and what comes forward in his books, there's no way for you to get through it and not have faith by the end of Frank's books, to go to the next one. Especially for what you've seen. You know, that story you laid on us today, that's heavy. That's heavy. You know, there was always a reason. I wonder why Frank was here. And today he revealed to me partially the reason why. Because now i got to ask you off air a hundred and million questions. Because I want to know. And I want to know as a, as a man, not as a God, not as a faint, not as a saint, not as a, a spiritual, none Which of that. Which story? As a man. The one that he let. Boy, were you, were you here? Yes, but I'm wondering. What did he see? Are you serious? Oh, that story. Oh, oh that, yeah. story. that story. I'm thinking about you being born a preemie when yeah, well, you were, I'm thinking. Oh, no, no, we're going deeper. <laughs> we're going deeper. He gave us a reason, one of the reasons that the saint, uh, the Mary Virgin showed Mary. up here. And I've, always, I've been waiting for him to lay something on me. Just been waiting. And today he did. And you know something? Well, you said you wanted a good show. <laughs> <laughs> See, Grace, we got your content in an hour. <laughs> she says, "Thank you." <laughs> it's it's an it's an amazing it's an amazing story that needs to be told. This is what I'm telling. This is what I'm telling me. But nonetheless, just be nice to one another. You, know, you ain't got to 100%. do it phrase way. Just be nice to one another. I got to appreciate kindness, and, kindness and appreciate what we have. You know, the story of why we're here comes back over and over again. I say to you all the time, God would not have led us here if there were not a reason or not a greater calling for us to be in this space. The not after it, the stories I heard today. Well, the way it happened and how we ended up here, there's a reason we're here. We may not know it, whatever the reason is, but God knows why we're here. And only you and I remember, out of everyone that's here, what we went through to get here. Yeah. Ooh. You know. Not fun. Yeah. You, you've been with us this whole journey. But here we are on the other side of it, and there's a reason why we're still here on the other side of you it. Know, there's a good side, too. I also saw the Virgin Mary, which was amazingly beautiful. See, but that one is a good story. That's a good story. The other one <laughs> is, a <good laughs> is a great mystery. How you doing? There you go. Oh, that's Perfect. That's <laughs> Perfect. That was awesome.
Shorty, if that was you, <laughs> I'm taking inches <laughs> off of you. That was good. Though. How do you get better and better? How the hell do we do that? That was good. <laughs> Interesting. We got to set up a camera in there so we can get the other side yes, of the production we gotta, room. We got to flip the script on. That was good. Um, right, so he saw the Virgin Mary, so he's seen both sides of it. Now, you remember Steve O. Yeah. You well, remember Steve O, right? Who? Steve O, the guy. The DJ? The DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember Steve O, and I know you know Steve O because you have pictures with him. Yeah. Um, and his, his uh, viewing is on Monday and Tuesday of next week for those of you that, that want to come out. And if you want the address, it's posted on Facebook. Um, but Steve-O used to talk to me about his mom a lot. And he talked to me about his life and all the things that he used to go through and, um, and some of the things that he saw. And Steve-O apparently died three times before that God told him to come home, eat off suffering, um, before all of this. So, well, when was I was a sick? kid. Yeah. He was. Okay. I had a dream. I still remember it to this day. It was, I was preteen. That I hit my head and died. And Jesus came to me in the dream and said, this is not your time to die. You've got things to do. And I woke up. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if I died in my sleep or that was just a dream. But I oh, met yeah. Jesus in the dream and he said, you're not supposed to be here. Send you back. It's amazing, that story, because I know people who have told me there was a plane crash, everybody died but one person. Mm -hmm. And they have to live with the guilt of why not me. Well, they talk about the story of Masada, where everyone dies. And there's that one person left, right? To because tell the story. it was self inflicted, so the Romans wouldn't come and kill everybody. That one person left to tell the story. And it's funny because the story is always about a tragedy and one survives. We never celebrate the hundreds of greatness and the hundreds survive. We never do it in the opposite direction. I mean, as I tell you, God has a real funny sense of humor because in my world, from what I've seen, he teaches a lesson even when the lesson doesn't need to be taught. And, are we define, and we define the lesson. How many people go through a bad state of mind? I remember when, when I was in the hospital, I made a a deal with God. I said, I'll make a deal, God. I will change my evil ways if you let me live a little longer. Um, and maybe it was true, maybe it wasn't. But it definitely it gave me a definition of what I was doing wrong and what I was doing right. But that's my, my deal. So I am who I am and the way I am. But I think that if we are better towards one another, we'll get a whole lot further whole lot further for not only ourselves but our kids and their kids and their grandkids and everything else. Yeah, because it's generational, right? You look at all these children in the Middle East and what are the, whatever side you're on, right. this is how you're raised. Hate is taught. And it's going to continue right. until we change the narrative on what, how we're raising our children on hate. Yeah, hate is taught. You don't come out hating. No. <laughs> you know? I mean, you're a baby. You don't know anything, but you're taught hate. You know, I mean, I remember, I remember when we lived in New York, and we ha we were from Buffalo, very white area. Okay, we had one black friend. His name was Pleasant Thomas. I uh, I just loved this man. We moved down here in the 70s. There were racial riots. I didn't understand that. I couldn't put my brain around that. We're like, what? why are we fighting? It, does, it didn't make sense to me because you're white and I'm black. That doesn't make sense. You know, so it's like hate Well, I'll give, you, I'll give you another one that makes even less sense. When you're Puerto Rican, you're not black or white. Right. So who do you, wow. who, who, what do you do? Right. My father used to say to me, Freddie, you're in trouble because you're white. The rest of us, we're a little darker. So we don't know where we stand. Yeah. Because there were some racial tensions also when the guy in California got beat up by the cops, uh, Rodney King. Right and, and the whole country turned upside down. I just saw the movie Civil War. Have you seen the movie Civil War? No, I won't see it. Go mm -hmm. see it. No. You should go see it. No. Frank probably wrote the book already. But it's important that you see it because it's true that that can happen. Mm -hmm. It's true that it can happen. We hope it never happens. But it's true that it can happen. And you can't be afraid of something that can happen. We can only learn from it and not let it happen. Just do not. Let it happen. And we have the power to do it. 
you know, the media teaches all these things about war, Hamas, Israel, Iran, Iraq, and oh, this and that. They and they're feed feeding it. you into thinking that pushing back is the thing to do when you're pushed. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Something pushed them into pushing. And we got to go back 3,000 years to find out who pushed who first. Enough, man. Enough with this nonsense. So I have to ask Dawn, you said you found faith when you were in your 30s. Yes. Do you remember what it was? Was there a moment or was oh, just yeah, an overall? It was, it, after I moved back home from New York, I was like really lost. I was angry at God. And I said, why is my life falling apart? And then he showed me, well, you haven't included me into your decisions. And so that started my journey of faith. And, and, and my life changed as a result of that. And so that's what's offered to us is God, if you put your hands in God's hands, is your life going to be easy? No. But he is there along with you every step of the way. And, and he has transformed me into the person I am today and will continue until I get to heaven. Because I'm always going, oh, yeah, hello, I need to work on that. Okay, thanks, God, you know. <laughs> but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. I mean, we have to grow in our faith. If we're standing still, you don't have faith. It's, action, it's an actionable verb, faith, faith in action. So I try and be kind and, and generous to people. And if we had more people act, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Jewish, whatever, if everybody did that, walked by faith and, and, and gave of themselves to other people, we would live in a better world. Right? See, because you were always in faith. I grew up Jewish, going to synagogue as a religion, not as a faith. Right. And the more I've worked with you and the more I've worked with everyone here, it's become more of a spirituality faith. Yes, I'm Jewish, but there's faith and there's a greater calling. So there's two parts of it. So just going to church or going to synagogue right. doesn't mean the faith of God or who you, what you believe in is within you. Right. You just know your traditions, your holidays. Exa that's the difference between what religion symbolism and you're faith. wearing, right? Yeah. Whether it's a cross or a star or whatever it is, right. that's your religion. That's not necessarily faith. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. right? You can be very religious but don't have any faith at all. Right. Exactly. You do all the religious things, but you have no, you don't have God in your heart. That's there's a huge difference. This between here. Your heart and your mind, not far, or, or but even it's what big. you. I mean, there's so many levels to it, but it's so different. I think what we teach our kids growing up, now that I'm older, if I would be raising my kids, it would be a different narrative. It would still be the religion of who we are and what they right. do. Right. And, and now that Aaron's married Ashley, that's changed a lot also because right. generations have changed. It's not about the religion. It's about who you are as a person that you believe in a greater calling and, and a greater good and a greater universal power for us all just to get along as mankind. Right. A lot of that's changed, but it wasn't, but now generationally I think it's changed from my grandparents to my parents to me. I'm sure my kids will raise their children differently, more in spirituality and faith and knowing what religions they have. But as long as you're kind to each other, right? Well, Martin Luther King said it best. It's not the color of their skin, it's the content of the character. Right. True that. You know, there was a, heart. There was a drug lord that I knew one day, and I sat down with him one day, and, and, I, and I said to him, with all due respect, I just want to know why you feed this poison to the community and you kill people and everything else. Don't you believe in God? And he says to me, Yo, why though? And he says to me, um, I don't believe in God, but I'm afraid of God. So I take some of my monies and I give it to the church. I mean, you got to think about this mentality. Right that he's expressing to her. I almost fell back in my chair and says, wait a minute, you what? You don't believe in God, but you give to the church because you're afraid of God. So sometimes we do a lot of things out of fear, mm. do the wrong things. Remember, I'm always telling you, don't make a bad deal to make a deal. I look at men, and that's what they do every day. They make bad deals thinking that making a bad deal is a deal, and you're making a deal. But it's the wrong deal. But it's like when you donate to church or synagogue. Do you put your name on the donation because you want everyone in your parish right. or your congregation to see it? Or do you give it anonymously because you just give from your heart? Right. There's different reasons that people give. I never Very even, true. 
very true. I never even yeah. heard of that. And I don't need to give my name. Yeah, but other people do because well, they want their name on it. that benefactor list of the whatever number plus. Then don't do it because that's a sin. If you're doing something for the wrong reason, you're, then that's a sin. To me, that was well, a sin. And God knows your heart. So he knows. That are you doing it so you can get recognition? Or are you doing it because you really, truly want to help? You know? All right, so maybe that dollar, because you really, truly want to help, is even more valuable than the $100,000 exactly. that someone wants their name on that right. donor list, right? right. The woman Different who things. washed Jesus' feet with the oil, and it was worth, it was worth beyond what the, the tax right. collectors and, and all of them were doing. They could have fed the 100 people, they, that one of the apostles said, with the oil, and he was putting it on his feet. Right. That's, Part of the movie that we saw, they sang that song explaining it. Jesus Christ Superstar. Interesting. They explained it. And they also talked about uh, uh, the woman that was in love with Jesus. She was a, a, a so-called prostitute. Oh, she had demons on her, Mary? And they said, um, you know, let, and what did he say? He says, let he who has never sinned cast the first stone. Right. And stop judging yeah. people. And, you know, it's funny. Just because you don't say it doesn't mean you don't judge people. Sure. Sure. You know, and that's when you start playing games of the brain and you judge somebody. And um, it's, it's amazing. You know, I grew up in the Bronx. I didn't know black from white. Uh, to me, I went to school with friends. Right. And I hung out with blacks and whites and purples and greens and, and yellows. And we didn't do any of this nonsense that you feel today. None of it. None of it. And my father used to ignore it because he was... He was um, they, they did this stuff to him, and I used to get mad. I says, Dad, don't you see this guy's talking? He says, so what? That's where I got, you see a lung? Yeah. See, so you see me bleeding? He says, Freddie, they're just words. I says, yeah, but that words hurt. And he taught me, he taught me the right way. He says, you, can, you can't take words with you to the grave. You just give them a nod, love them, and move on. That's a great lesson. Did you have visions always or after? After. Since you so since you've been writing, and going since to the I've apparition that, center since I was at the apparition site, I haven't had visions before. Since then, you have them now. Not often as I did before, but I still get flashes every once in a while. I don't know what they are, but I still get visions of weird stuff. Interesting visions. Things that happen. I know. I had a vision of 9/11. Mm. I didn't know what it was until 9/11. I had woke up, I had a vision that morning that I saw a tree, and then the tree was just covered by smoke. I woke up in the morning, I went, the heck was that me? I had, so a, then, vi I had a vision six years ago that she had a show. <laughs> <laughs> True. And it came to fruition. <laughs> and I say to that, I say it to her all the time, this is running joke now, but I had a vision that I saw at dawn with a book. I had a vision that this one and I were going to be doing this, and it lasted four years where she kept saying, no, no, no. You're I had a vision, patient. I had a vision that you were going to be here. I just don't understand why until today. You're a very patient man, I must say. To learn a lesson, you have to be patient. Yeah. Interesting. Sure. All right. You ready to wrap this up? Yes. All right, thank you. Tune in today to Faith Stories. Who is your guest? Pete Graham, Story of Job. Very similar, very similar, very successful. Is he coming man. in? Huh? Is he going to be in the studio? Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Next week is. She's in. Do North you have Carolina. music and stuff going on? I today? do, yes. Always. And I'm recruited, Ann, and, and, and to be at Michelle? the show. <laughs> yes. Michelle's coming? You know, last week they put Anna instead of Ann. I swear to God. It's not me, they're saying? Uh, it said Anna instead of Anne. It yeah. should have said AKA Michelle, and oh we would have been all Lord, covered. This poor woman. I, I had someone that. walk in the other day, and she introduced herself. Her name's Michelle. And I went to introduce her to Freddie. I said, Wait, you did tell me your name is Michelle, right? And she said, She asked why. Is it because we call everyone in here Michelle? <laughs> Somebody put a shirt to put something on the shirt that says they call me Michelle with her face on it. I think it's hilarious. It's going to be on the back of our new branding shirt. I think it'll be great. Watching your child. Tune in today to Faith Stories at 3. And Frank, where are we getting your books? Everywhere. 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 <laughs> Everywhere. Awesome. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can call me directly or contact me directly by my website, 
by my email, frankarofolo at gmail.com. Mother's Day is coming up. They make great gifts. They make great gifts. Should do, we should do a uh, book signing in here so Frank can explain um, his last book and some of the other stuff. Now you're going to read them. I am. I think I'll start from the beginning. You know, the funny thing about Frank is once you get to know him, he isn't, he isn't what you thought it was. It just changes all the time, like a different person. Yeah. Pretty much. Interesting. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Be safe. Be kind to each other. Tune in today to Faith Stories at 3 p.m. on the AMP Media Network, and then tonight at 6.30 to Sarah Spiritual. Phew, a whole lot of... By the time she gets in here today, the roof may be levitating. I don't even know. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. drive time. Don't be late. Bye-bye. Well, that's about it for today. Even though the show's over, the Broken Cafe is always open for business. You're invited to join the fun every day from 12 to 2. If you missed some of the last from today, Dawn and Freddie S. will bring you more good cheer next time. You can follow the Broken Cafe on Facebook at the Broken Cafe TV to rewatch every minute of the show. We'll see you next time.